Okay, well this is the render that we left off with and so coming back into Maya, uh, what we're going to begin to do now is we're going to begin to explore how to further enhance this light, this area light that we have from previously uh, by adding in a few mental ray uh, nodes into the, into the mixture and taking out the Maya overrides which are essentially still controlling the light in a lot of ways. Um, uh, for instance, the, the, the intensity and the, and, and, and the, and the fall off and the, you know, those kinds of controls uh, uh, that you want with lights are, are right now really being controlled by Maya. So what we're going to want to do is come over here in the hypershade uh, down into the mental ray tab and under lights, uh, mental ray lights, the first thing we're going to want to do is just add in a physical light. Okay? So uh, the way that you do that is you come back over to your area light and you scroll down into the mental ray section and you can see where it says light shader and we're going to click suppress all Maya shaders and we're going to drag that in to the light shader attribute. It's as simple as that. Now we're going to go one step further uh, because I mean I, I guess we could just take Let's just let's, let's, let's snap off a render here real quick before we uh, move on to the next portion and see if there's any difference between the two. So let's save the scene and I'm going to snap off this render and I'll be right back. Uh, well, I canceled the render because I could see really quickly that we weren't getting anything. And that's, part, that's really because these physical light, because it's, especially it's called a physical light, is going to behave physically correct, which means that light is going to fall off, you know, uh, in, in a physically correct manner, uh, which is that exponential fall off, it's n squared or whatever it is, it's the exact mathematical formula of it. But the Maya lights don't do that, and this light, it does do that. Maya, Maya lights do do that under a, a certain degree of approximation, but they're not real physical lights. You, in the, under the Maya lights, you can see that you have this dig decay rate, and you can set it to this linear quadratic and cubic. And 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 truthfully, none of those are, are, are true physically. Not any of those are truly physically correct. Though I think that quadratic gets the closest. Uh, uh, but regardless, uh, this physical light is going to behave physically correct, and so there is no longer enough intensity for the light to even reach the scene. And uh, 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 we can control the intensity uh, in, in through this physical light by setting the value higher uh, uh, in the color section. But what I'm going to actually ultimately want to do is I'm going to control this with the MIB black body, and that's over there. So I'm going to just click that MIB black body and I'm going to drag that onto the color section of the uh, physical light. So now let's just graph that. Let's close this and graph that so we can see real clearly what we have. So we have an area light and going into the area light into the light shader attribute is a physical light and controlling the color and the intensity of that physical light is an MIB black body. And there's only two settings in MIB black body. One of them is temperature and one of them is intensity. So the first thing that we're going to do is look at, uh, uh, I could take a, I mean, I could take a real quick snapshot here and just show you that there's absolutely no light going in in the scene. Uh, there's zero, none. Uh, I, I, I mean, I, I would be venture to guess at least uh, because the intensity of the light is set so small. And uh, these lights can, I'm going to just cancel that. We see that there's no light coming in. These lights can take huge large numbers depending upon how large your scene is. And, and truthfully, I didn't model this scene in any kind of uh, real s correct scale. I just kind of modeled it and put it together. Usually if I'm modeling architecture or lighting architecture, I am modeling to correct world world scale. And I can con control the lights in a more predictable manner. But uh, uh, in this case, uh, it's not real world scale, so we might get large numbers. Uh, you will even in real world scale get large numbers over here in this intensity. So first, usually the first thing that I usually do is go to 10,000 and then I see what I get. We could just come here and grab a little sliver and just do a render region real fast and see if we're getting any light in there and if it were if it warrants you know rendering a further render or if it uh, doesn't. And you can see we're still really not getting any light in there. So up it goes. So now I'm just going to take it to, I'm actually going to take it to 200,000. And sometimes it, that might not be enough, or sometimes it'll blow it out, you know. Uh, uh, either way, it's just going to go up dramatically a lot to see if we have to go down or up. 
If you don't get anything, then we go to, you know, sometimes I'd jump it quickly into the millions. So there you go. We can begin to see that we're getting some light in our scene. It's still not a whole lot, but I, I'm going to have to come up here, I think, and snap off a render. It'll be smarter so I can see what's happening uh, with some lights because this could be the end of our psych and the bottom of the thing. So, okay. So we're getting some light. It's not that much. So I'm going to just quickly cancel that. And come back to Maya, and I'm going to actually just set this at a million. All right, that is a million. Is that not correct? Yeah, a million. Okay. Now I'm going to come here. Let's just grab that whole sliver, and I'm going to go render region. And let's see what happens. Uh, there we go. We're beginning to get the amount of light in our scene that we would like, and you can already see. I mean, at least the the, the quality of the light itself has a little bit more richness to it uh, 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 in how the surfaces fall off and the gradation. Um, it's not looking so, uh, I don't know, there was something about the, the, the other render that in the hot spots was making me believe it wasn't being lit quite correctly. I, I, I'm not sure exactly what it was, but I can see here that there's a, there's a big huge difference. Uh, in the in the quality of it, it definitely needs to be a little bit brighter. You can see even in the quality uh, of the shadows that we're getting, uh, 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 yeah, it, it just everything is looking a lot better. So what we're going to do here is we are going to now. I'm going to come back. I'm going to turn off this reflective plane because I don't think we really need it uh, for this lesson. And I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to turn these both white for a little while. So let's just assign material. And I'm going to pump this up now to 2 million. And I will snap off a whole render, and then I will pause the video, and I will be, re be right back. Okay, so uh, now we're back, and we can see that we've got a scene. We've got some whites. It's getting a little bit blown out. We've got this slight... It's going to probably be very hard for you to pick up, but it's kind of like a slight slight amberish hue, nice soft shadows, the light's falling off. Uh, I mean, there's nothing fantastic about this lighting, but it's illustrating the point uh, uh, pretty clearly. Right now, we're using a Lambert, uh, 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 Maya Lambert, for uh, shading, and I think that what I'm going to do is just to uh, kind of keep it consistent. I'm going to come over here, and I am going to use a MI Material X. I don't need to use the one with passes in it, because it doesn't matter at this point. And under Presets, I'm going to come over here and just set it to Matte Finish. So we get a matte finish, and I'm going to make that uh, uh, pure, pure white. Okay instead of the Lambert. Uh, uh, the, the reason being is, is that uh, this is a, a, a physical, physical shader, fundamentally, energy conservation, so you can never get values over one, and if they do, it'll clip. Uh, it, they conserve energy. Uh, I mean, that has more to do when you're getting into reflections, like you can never have a surface that's, you know, 120% shading, like if it's the diffuse is set to 70 and the reflectivity is set to 0.5, really you're getting you know 1.2 and it's values over one and 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 in the real world that would be physically impossible so uh, the, these shaders have ways of dealing with that right uh, uh, so it with the area light and the physical light let's use a physical shader why not right especially when we start getting into a few different material tests with this light okay but the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to come back to the light okay and uh, I'm just going to graph that real quickly to get it into the scene. And I'm going to come back to this black body. Okay, it was a little hot, not too bad. I'm going to take it to like a 1.7 for right now. And with this color temperature, you can see it's set to 6500. This is in Kelvin, and uh, you should all be familiar with what a uh, color chart looks like. I, uh, I don't I don't have one handy, but there are plenty around. But basically, let, this is going to control the color temperature of the light. So you can actually match world, real world situations, like for instance, uh, let's do a common fluorescent light. It's going to be 3200 Kelvin. It's going to be very. It's going to be amberish. You'll see uh, in the render. Uh, uh, but that's a common photo color light to use out in the real world, right? Uh, a lot of uh, 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 photo bulbs come at 3200 
uh, uh, Kelvin. So let's just check out what that does to our render with all of our white pieces. And again, I'll be uh, right back after the render's done. Let's put this in the graph so we can kind of compare the two. And I'll be back. Well, we can see, uh, one, that the scene is very, very amber. And, and, but that is actually the 3200 degrees Kelvin, the color temperature of a lot of household lights and, and, and photo lights. And like if you imagine, if you see a lit room at night through a window, you can always see that yellow-orange glow more evidently than you can when the surfaces are all, you know, when there's multiple lights coming in and multiple light sources. But you can use this to color match. So. Uh, again, a lot of it's going to be artistic choices and things that you make. Uh, uh, this light itself can, 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 the one difference between it, for instance, and the CIE uh, light, let's, let's just look at that real quickly. Um, let's pull up the uh, hypershade again. Okay, so with the hypershade open, let's just select the light and let's just graph it. And uh, I'm just going to zoom out here a little bit. So we have a little bit of room. And uh, let me actually un minimize this so we can see our settings too over here zoom out so we can see and we're just going to kind of cross compare really quickly a few differences between the MIB black body and the uh, CIE light which is it, the light functions on a, a, a CIE D light and it basically functions a lot of the same manner it's just that you have limitations so like for instance if we look at the color temperature and you try to type in 1200 it, it bumps you, keeps you at 4,000. So it's going to keep you within a range. Let's try to type in 15,000. And it's it's going to let you do that, but it's going to never let you go down below 4,000 uh, for some reason. I'm not 100% sure why that is. It probably has something to do with the specifications of uh, CIE. So anyway, so let's get back to the MIB black body and let's look at these color temperature settings because right now we've already only set it to 3200. So what I'm going to want to do is let's just go through a few of the range settings and that's how we'll end the lesson because that's really all you need to know about this light. All right, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to some extreme ranges and then we'll go to the middle ground, which is like a daylight lighting kind of setting, right? So for the first one, let's go to something like 10,000. Okay, Oz. Uh, yeah, 10,000. Okay, so there we go. So with that said, let's just come back to our camera view so that we can see where we're going to render. I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to uh, snap off a render, and I will be back when the render is done. Okay, well, uh, the render is done, and we can see immediately that the color temperature has completely changed in the opposite direction to a very bluish cast. The render, uh, it's a little bright. Uh, I'd probably tone that down uh, a little bit, which let's just go and do that really fast. Okay, so let's see what color temperature is. I'm going to take that down to uh, 1300 for the remainder of our renderings. And uh, let's come back up here to the CIE light. And so you can see that the color temperature ranges, uh, you know, the, the, the higher the value, the bluer you're going to get. You can keep going up with this. Okay, so let's just quickly go through a few of the different settings uh, within the color temperature range so that we can see what the differences are and what we get uh, rendering wise. So let's go to kind of like a median value, which is 5700, and let's snap off a render there. Okay. So I'll just render this, and then I will be right back as soon as the render is done. So you can see with the setting of 5700, we're still uh, pretty amber, but it's kind of leaning more towards a, a, a white. Uh, it's not anywhere near as amber as uh, uh, the lower color temperatures are. So now let's look at something like 6500 and see what happens. Okay, well you can see uh, that with that setting of 6500 degrees that we've crossed that threshold. Uh, so somewhere between 5700 degrees and 6500 degrees is going to be our point of threshold where we're going to cross over from the amber world into that kind of cool, the cool lighting rather than the warm lighting.